Hey everyone, today we'll be making another game plan guide where we look at low elo games and discuss how our average Joe should play an early game. In the past, we've created a lot of guides about different strategies that you can use in the jungle from hard farm strategies, gank strategies, invading, camping, etc. The goal of this video is to equip you with the tools to decide which of these strategies to follow in specific games so that you always have the winning game plan and all you need to do is execute. And the reason we want to continue to make this same style of video is that with such an insane number of champs in the game, the variables are reaching absurd heights. Developing a winning game plan is a lot like getting jacked. As gamers, we're all ripped Herculean chads who everyone wants to hang out with. But how did literally every single one of us get to be this way? By training over and over and over again. This is exactly how we're going to perfect our ability to massively increase our odds of succeeding in game by always and instantly having the perfect plan. So let's jump into it. In our first game of the day, we have a gold elo Evelyn facing off against the Shavana. And here are the full comps. Just as a refresher, the way that we're going to go about making these game plans is to look at these six core categories of playstyle and first talk about which of these are not viable options for this game. So take a bit of time, pause the video if you need, and try to think about which of these playstyles Eve should not pursue. Alright, so for this game, we're going to hard pass on objectives, camping one specific lane, counter ganking, and purely power farming. Regarding objectives, we're playing Evelyn. She's not great at taking objectives in the first place, and her priority is getting herself ahead rather than her teammates, which objectives usually accomplish very poorly. As for camping one lane, we have very clear moments within this team comp where we'll want to gank different lanes. Can you think of what we mean by that? Take a second if you need. So what we mean is that in the early game, ganking top is insanely free. Renekton sets up ganks so well and Nasus is very easy to gank. But once Malzahar hits level 6, that becomes an insane gank target as well. So once again, rather than camping one lane, we're going to adapt and gank different lanes depending on what we see and the game time. Now for counter ganking, we just know that Shyvana's very rarely gank and are really bad at it, so it's not a reliable strategy here. As for power farming, we put this here because we want to make it super clear that power farming is not how we win this game. You're Evelyn, so you're absolutely going to be farming a lot, but that can't be the entirety of your strategy for this game. The enemy top and bot lane both hard outscale you, so you'll need to snowball the game while keeping up your farm to succeed. So how do we win this game? Well, early game we want to path top and look to punish this matchup hard. Normally, we might need to be worried about the enemy jungler as Evelyn, but Shyvana is insanely weak early, so we can kind of do whatever we want. Then, we'll want to continue to full clear our jungle towards the top side pre-6, repeat ganking when we can, and snowballing that matchup out of control. After 6, we can start snowballing through mid and using top and mid prio to interrupt Shyvana in her jungle if possible, maybe taking a Rift Herald to break first tower as well. Once again, saying that we're not playing four objectives doesn't mean that we can't take one, just that we're not playing specifically to them or relying on them as our win condition. Anyway, with all that said, let's jump into the game and see where our gold Evelyn goes wrong. Right away, we see Evelyn start at blue and end up topside, which is great. That's what we wanted. But we also see her wasting a lot of time trying to camp for Shyvana, which really makes no sense since she doesn't even win that 1v1, and this is just also purely inefficient, which is the opposite of the game plan for Eve. Later, at 8 minutes, Eve is yet to gank top lane, which is such a waste of a completely free lane, and we see that she's also level 5 at this point, a clear indication of our earlier inefficiencies that we pointed out. And this gank works out, picking up a 1 for 0, but we just still don't think that this is a good gank that fits our plan. It was completely reliant on Morgana landing a bind, and Eve had two camps up, almost level 6. There's so many ways that this goes wrong and gets punished and just does not fit with our plan of efficiently gaining secure advantages. And sure enough, moments later, we see Renekton, the lane that Eve should have snowballed, die to Shyvana, followed up by Eve wasting even more time bottom, forcing a disaster of a gank. This game, Evelyn did not even remotely follow the game plan of spending the early game full clearing and snowballing top before transitioning that lead to mid lane and eventually the enemy jungle. 
As a result, her team got smashed in 20 minutes, with her leading the way in the death column. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Alright, moving on to our next game, this time we join with another gold player piloting Olaf. And here are the team comps for this game. Once again, let's think about which of these six categories we don't think are viable win conditions. Take as long as you need. Okay, so the main thing to instantly notice within this game is that Olaf absolutely needs to assert his dominance over Yi in this early game. So right away, we're just going to take off power farming. If we trade farm, we lose. Beyond that, you don't want to be camping any one lane again this game, since both top and bottom are super volatile matchups that could both require your attention. Also, if we play correctly, Yi shouldn't even be able to gank, so there goes that one as well. So, our plan for this game is to abuse Master Yi as much as possible as our absolute number one priority, then transition that lead into objectives and supporting your volatile matchups. So, let's jump into the replay as we see Olaf walking out by his blue, dropping a defensive ward, and recalling for sweeper. And at this point, our challenger consultant was already shaking his damn head. Why do you think he's so upset already? Well, not only should Olaf not be placing defensive vision here at level 1, he should be hard invading Yi's red with his team. If you look at these comps at level 1, Olaf's team has a clear, massive advantage, so he should be spam pinging his team to go in. Best case, they grab a kill or two. Worst case, he steals red and disrupts Yi right from the start. And if you're worried about Yi starting his blue and going to your red since you started at his, you can ask your mid laner or top to ward for you, which they'll probably do, but even if they don't, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, Olaf starts out at blue, clears out his grump, then runs straight to his red, which is great. This quick route allows him to then path over to Master Yi's blue, but we see a huge mistake as he smites red. There is absolutely no reason to do this, and it hurts his invading power significantly, but we do still see him run into Yi's blue. And here, we see him make a huge mistake as he thinks the blue is gone, turning for Grump. Olaf can't see these animations that we see in the replay, but he can see that the blue is still up on the minimap if he had looked. This mistake leads to disaster. Had he realized the blue was up, or just checked the brush with an axe, he could have either killed Yi or pushed him out freely since it was 16 seconds from when he arrived until Set got there. Not even a minute later, we see Olaf being collapsed on in the river, leading to another absolutely disastrous play that seals this game as a loss not even 5 minutes in as Yi picks up his fourth kill. So, was this loss the result of failed execution as well as failed planning? Absolutely. However, had Olaf invaded at level 1 as he clearly should have, the situation at blue likely never would have happened and the snowball could have been stopped before it started. This is why it's so important to not only have a good plan, which invading Yi at blue was, but to have the best plan whenever possible, which starting the game at Yi's red was. When you recognize such a clear number one priority win con as shutting down Yi was this game, fully committing to that from the very get go is essential. This non smurf gold 4 master Yi ended this game with 23 kills in a 26 minute stomp. Next up, we have a gold 1 set 20 player facing off in this game that we see here. Once again, take some time to consider these 6 playstyles and decide which are not good win conditions to pursue. Okay, so the number one most important thing that you should have realized for this game is that Sejuani has insane gank setup across the map. Wukong can proc Sejuani's E incredibly well, and everyone else on her team has CC even before level 6, where some of them get more. So we're not going to camp one lane, we're not going to counter jungle, we're not going to power farm. We're going to gank and gank and gank some more, and maybe pick up some objectives after those ganks as well, but that's a secondary concern. But it's also important to mention that counter ganking post 6 becomes pretty dangerous against a TF. A 3v3 bot lane can super quickly turn into a 3v4, which is something that we'll need to be aware of. So our plan for this early game will be to hit level 3 as quickly as possible and start ganking, kind of like how an Elise plays out in early game. And we see our gold Sejuani starting out at red and pathing toward top, which is fine. You can technically path either top or bot this game, but we agree that top is likely a bit better because Sejuani's E is just so reliable and that top matchup is incredibly volatile. 
Next, we see him start Wolves, which, once again, had our challenger losing his mind. Why do you think that is? Well, as most of you hopefully know already, if he clears out red, Wolves, blue, he will not hit level 3, so he will be required to take Gromp as well before he can even consider ganking. This may not seem like a big problem, but it is a huge one and just speaks to a discordant game plan. If he wasn't rushing level 3 by going red, blue, gromp, then why skip raptors? Going red, wolves, blue, gromp here is a route that makes no sense whether you want to farm or if you want to hit level 3 and gank. Beyond all of this, at level 1, we saw that the enemy bot lane leashed, so we know that Trundle is also pathing topside. And whenever you and the enemy jungler are pathing to the same side of the map, there's a lot of value in getting there first. You're able to place the first ward, or start the scuttle and push it towards your winning lane, etc. Now, of course, there's also value in a slower route that gives level 4, but this one gives Sejuani nothing and only makes him slower. And playing the clip some more, we do see a pretty random invade from Trundle that punishes Sejuani ridiculously hard for this mistake. This invade and being punished this hard is pretty unlikely, but even without this happening, this route was still a really big disconnect from how Sejuani should have been playing this early game. And to put the nail in the coffin, as Sedge runs back from base, still level 2, she engages into a skirmish, loses in a big unlucky moment, and is still level 2 at 4 minutes. This was a game where Sejuani really had a dream setup and had a great shot at carrying the game, and she threw it away in under 4 minutes because she didn't have a clear plan to start the game, getting massively jungle diffed in a 28 minute loss. Alright, next up for our last game of this video, we have Nunu facing off in this game you see here. Once again, you guys know the routine by now, so which of these 6 are not viable plans to win this game? Great, so hopefully you all immediately marked off power farming. We're playing Nunu here. Beyond that, we're unlikely to accomplish a ton through counter ganking this game, as Nocturne is likely to just power farm to 6, at which point he becomes incredibly difficult to counter gank through darkness. It's possible, but just not something to rely on. And once again, camping one lane isn't necessarily a great idea, as you have very gankable lanes in both top and mid. So our plan for this early game is to double scuttle Nocturne since he's likely to full clear. More on this later. Beyond that, we also want to put our stamp on this game before the enemy top, jungle, and mid are able to unlock their game-changing ultimates. We'll look to do this by invading or ganking depending on whether or not our lanes have priority. And of course, since we're playing Nunu, objectives are pretty much always part of our ring condition, and we should look to grab those early. Anyway, let's jump into the game and see what happens as Nunu starts out at red buff and grabs Krugs before heading to topside. Now, we would have preferred that he start at blue and path bottom. Why do you think that is? Okay, so normally against full clear champions like Nocturne, Evelyn, Karthus, Fiddlesticks, Master Yi, etc., someone like Nunu or Lee Sin, who is stronger in the early game and not as reliant on farming, can match their opponent's clear and turn that into a double scuttle. The reasoning here is that those full clear champs are basically always late to scuttle, getting there usually between 3.30 and 4 minutes, roughly. This means that you can clear Scuttle right at 3.15 uncontested, then move through mid to the other at some point. In some matchups, you could also invade Gromp after taking Scuttle if you have Pryo nearby. You'll be higher health and, against slower clearers, the same level still. Now, jumping back into this specific game, we know that Nocturne usually starts in his red buff side. So, if we wanted to match him, we could start blue, clear down to bot side, and grab Scuttle there. Now, if you're not sure where your opponent is going to start, it can be great to ward at level 1, but we actually wouldn't recommend that this game, considering that the enemy team has Nautilus Braum, so keep that in mind. Anyway, we see Nunu continue to clear, arriving at top scuttle just before 315. And let's take a look at Nocturne's POV here for a bit, as we see that at 315, he's still working on blue. And, after that, he starts up Gromp, clearing it with very low HP and zero vision. He doesn't move into the river until 3.45, 30 seconds after Scuttle spawn, and is allowed to collect it for free before quickly moving to Nunu's Raptors, knowing that Nunu avoids that camp on the first clear. So, it's very safe to say that Nunu could have easily taken the bot Scuttle, even if he couldn't have invaded with his bot lane so shoved in. 
still able to double scuttle from there easily. And having scuttle vision very likely would have deterred Nocturne from taking his raptors as well. At this point, Nocturne is already plus three camps over Nunu, well on his way to his win condition of farming for six, while Nunu does nothing to prevent that. Anyway, jumping back to Nunu, we see him waste time checking Nocturne's raptors, which would very obviously be gone, and poking at mid even though he's pushed under his tower. He then runs top for a gank, and we're not going to hate on this despite the questionable execution, it still does net a kill. Our issue with this, of course, is that he could have slowed down Nocturne's early game and ganked, but only chose to do one. 90 seconds later, we see Nunu coming from base and farming out his Krugs. Do you think this was correct? If not, what else should he have done? Again, we don't think this fits into Nunu's win condition. He's spending time farming a camp that Nunu clears quite slowly when he could blast Cone over for a free dragon with Pryo in mid and bot. Instead, he clears Krugs at a painstaking pace, runs mid for whatever that was, then starts up the dragon after walking over approximately 10 possible ward spots. Beyond all of that, what's the other big issue with starting this dragon at 6.30 rather than a minute earlier at 5.30? Well, this is the point when solo laners and power farming junglers can be hitting level 6, which is a huge issue against that team, as we see them get collapsed on with Nunu going down and Zyra and Bane both having to flash out. Had he run straight to Dragon and used the Blast Cone, none of this would have happened. Alright, we hope that during this video, you were able to see the crucial importance of identifying a game plan and sticking to it. In all of these games, our average players either had the wrong plan or didn't fully commit to that plan resulting in them being largely responsible for their team's losing. Once again, creating a rock-solid game plan is going to take practice, so we really encourage you to do this before every single game to work on and develop that muscle. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.